What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Carefree. Uh, some interesting developments happening in the crypto space this weekend, or I should say maybe not too interesting. Uh, we, You know what? We've been talking about this all week, so it shouldn't be interesting. This should be some old stuff if you've been following along. So anyways, let's go ahead and jump right into the charts, right? So yesterday we were talking about yesterday, or yesterday we were talking about yesterday? Anyways, yesterday we were talking about uh, this candle closure that you're seeing right here that my cursor is above. Uh, we were talking about that and how it closed pretty nicely and that we were likely to probably see continuation of the upside. Obviously, we did not get that. Uh, we did get this uh, pullback, I, I don't know, or rejection from this area. Uh, I don't really like using re rejection as, you know, like the term just because it's kind of like, uh, I feel like it's it's a lot worse to say than a pullback. You know what I mean? But anyway, so we got this little pullback from this area. We did not test the prior all-time highs anymore. Uh this is not a bearish engulfing candle in case you guys are wondering. It needs to go ahead and also encompass the wick as well. It did not do that, so I don't see this as a too, uh, too threatening as of yet. Like we've been discussing, this low right here, this yeah, this candle's low, is the pivot in the market. If we do take out this low, I would likely um, target moves back down to 3200 and then if that doesn't hold, uh, $2,500. Um, Things are getting a little concerning in this area, um, just because we're really grinding it out, and uh, we'll talk even more about Bitcoin and how a little bit more concerning it is. But right now, I don't think it's anything to kind of uh, uh, kind of get too worried about. But we got to be looking out for it, honestly. So let's go ahead and take a look at the ADX DMI. So the DMI Plus is finally getting below the uh, threshold. Uh, I'm not a fan of that. I don't like how yesterday's candle closed above the uh, 10 EMA. That it, that kind of rubs me a little bit the wrong way and makes me feel like we might play out a little bit more of a range. Especially with the DMI Plus getting below the threshold, I definitely think we're going to play out some sideways action from right here. And maybe build out a base between the, the 3 spot 272 and the 4 spot extension. That's what I'm thinking is likely to happen. RSI is still looking very healthy though in the uh, bullish control zone, just consolidating. I don't have any uh, problems with that. Um, we did test the EMA on the RSI, did get a little bit of a move and some bearish divergence off that, and it has played out. Uh, <clears throat> let's see, let's let's talk about the Stokes. Uh, I don't really like the Stokes on this one. I did draw this trend line, but I don't, I don't, I'm not really feeling too confident on that, and I, I'm not a big fan. Uh, we'll probably take a look at uh, we'll, we'll take a look right now. What what is this looking like on uh, Ethereum CMEs on the daily? Yeah, so this is a little bit more obvious. Again, this isn't really enough data to really do too much TA on, but it is enough to draw a trend line. And we are getting pretty coiled up. We uh, So this is looking like we are going to play out a little bit more sideways. I'd say maybe for the next day or two until, you know, CMEs actually do open back up because we will be testing this. I think we already are on Ethereum, right? Yeah, we're kind of coming in with this trend line right here. So, so coming into tomorrow, I think uh, I would like to see right uh, us turn up coming into this trend line. Uh, if it doesn't, I would, it's not a death sentence in and of itself. I do think we're going to play out a little bit more sideways and down if we do break that trend line, though, on the Stokes. Um, HVP is starting to get to the levels that we want to see. I do want to see the moving average get up to you know the 90-plus region as well, but it is... You guys can't even see it. Hold on. Sorry, I've got to move the mic a little bit. But it's at 71 right now. And so <clears throat> that's a little low. You know, I want to see that get kind of like over here where it was, you know, pretty much at 100. That's what I'm looking for. Again, like I've been saying all week. So we'll just breeze past that. Uh, oh, yeah, I also forgot what to say what we were talking about today. We're going to be going ahead and covering uh, Ethereum, Bitcoin, uh, traditional markets, so NASDAQ and SPY, as well as uh, Dogecoin and DOT, uh, pretty much in that order, mind you. And so, yeah, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the four hour. So on the four hour yesterday, we were talking about how this is likely going to be the uh, the low and I was looking for things to continue to the upside, but I did want to see how that next four hour candle did close. And that's why we go ahead and operate off of closures, right? Because uh, as you, if you would have waited for this candle to close, you would have seen that, you know, we were likely to come back down and, you know, we weren't going to get any more upside. Uh, I did a poor job on laying out conditions back down to the downside, right? 
if we did take out that loan. So my apologies. I'll make sure I, I'm, I'm trying to work on that, you know. Anyways, we came back down, tested the lows. Uh, I was saying how, like, you know, weakened price action is a little bit more uh, whippy, and we may come back down to those lows. But I wasn't very confident on that. Um, obviously, we did test around the lows. Uh, we didn't break any of. We didn't break the structure. I don't like uh, pretty much how we're putting in this flat bottom right here. Uh, this is pretty too. This is too early to tell. This is not good TA. What I'm about to do right now, but uh, we could start to put in a descending triangle from here if we. Uh, so we got kind of like a trend line right here. I honestly wouldn't even encompass this high just because it's a whole different part of the structure. I would actually kind of move this down like this. So we do have a possible formation in the forming. This is kind of crystal ball stuff on that part, but I would just be observant of that. Um, if we do break this low, again, I do think we're coming down to the two spot 618, so about $3,200. Uh, my next condition, to test the prior all-time highs, right, is if we go ahead and take out this high right here on a four-hour closure. I want to see it close above the wicks. That's what I would like to see, just because I don't like, um, I, I wouldn't do this on a wick basis, just because I think we're about to see a little bit more sideways. We're also, if we look at four-hour stokes, let me get rid of this. Uh, we got a rejection from the bullish control zone on the Stokes. We turned down from that area. I don't really like that. That is kind of denoting a little bit more sideways. Um, RSI is looking a little fine. We did test the bearish control zone, right? This area right here. And we are bouncing off of it. Usually that is a pretty good basing area. We do like to come down, test it, come back up. Uh, so I would like to see how this plays out. Uh, and then HVP is still just, you know, doing its thing. Uh, things aren't too concerning. Uh, if we do, let's go back to a daily, right? Let's say this area right here does not hold and we start to come back down to 3,200. I mean, that's not anything uh, too crazy, right? We still don't have uh, a real high in this area. I would still count this all as kind of one high. And so uh, even then, this isn't really like the low I'm looking for. I'd like a very clear stop in reverse points to kind of confirm uh, highs and lows. But so we're still just going down in my opinion, or sideways as you want to call it. But again, that's all based off of perspective. Anyways, we what I'm trying to say is that we could fill out this range very, like we have a lot of space to do this in, right? Our last actual low was at $2,200. And so if Bitcoin, or not Bitcoin, but if Ethereum wants to go ahead and come all the way down to, you know, $2,800, if it really felt like it, uh, it wouldn't break any of the long-term structure in this. So that's all I'm trying to say. We could definitely play out more downside. It's not out of the question, but am I really looking for that based off of this? As of right now, no. It's also the weekend, so I'm not really looking for anything to really break over the weekend either. I think we just kind of move sideways for today. Uh, the real action is going to be tomorrow morning when uh, CMEs open up. And uh, it's going to be like probably like if you guys are in the U.S., you know, Sunday night for y'all. But that's usually when the action starts to get, you know, uh, back on again, you know. Anyways, uh, so yeah, if we go ahead and take out this high, I would be targeting to move it back up to the prior all-time highs at around, uh, you know, forty-three or $4,400 right around there. It depends on what your exchange is. Let's see. Again, yeah, I'm pretty much just repeating myself. So that's what I would look for, uh, DMI and ADX Plus on the lower term time frames. I mean, both are above the threshold, might be dipping back down. Yeah, I don't really have too much to say here. We both know, we, we all know our targets to the upside now and to the downside. Uh, Ethereum does not look too concerning to me, but the uh, real concern is coming in with Bitcoin. Let's go ahead and take a look at the hourly real quick just to see how it's doing for all my short-term traders. And so on the hourly, we did get a, a bullish engulfing candle a few hours ago. See, that's what I'm talking about when we go ahead and completely take over the wicks. From you know high high to low, this candle go ahead and encompass the previous candle. Um, depending on how this closes, this could be a topping formation. But again, it's too early to tell. It's only thirty minutes. Uh, if it closes anywhere like this, and when the next candle goes ahead and wicks below, I would expect another move back down to the downside. Let's go ahead and look at the four hour again. Are we putting in any divergences? No, we're not. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, no types of divergences. Uh, it's not necessary, but I would like to see it to go ahead and target that move back up to the upside. Uh, 
So again, possibly just moving sideways from here. This does look like it wants to, you know, be a low, but we still have an hour and a half before this candle closes. Far too much time to actually go ahead and make predictions based off of that. I would like to see it close first. Okay, I think that kind of fully covers our Ethereum analysis uh, pretty much. To wrap that up, I think we're going to go ahead and move sideways. Uh, the real action is going to come into tomorrow. But if we do go ahead and uh, take out uh, the targets to the low side, again, uh, looking like we're going to be going back down to about $3,200. Yeah. And then see where it goes from there. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about some Bitcoin real quick. So Bitcoin, uh, as we've been saying all week, is likely to go ahead and grind out these lows. The next, this, the pivot on the market right now is this candle right here, and it has a low of about 45.7 on the dot. If you're looking at Bitstamp, uh, we're not closing below this low, and so we're still healthy in my opinion. Uh, it's definitely going to go ahead and make you sweat, like I was talking about. This is a time to be a little bit concerned. You, uh, <clears throat> you have quite a few things. You know, we have RS. Whoops. We have RSI right here, you know, getting a rejection from the neutral slash uh, bullish control zone and heading on back down. Uh, that is, uh, that's not really the sign of health and fitness that you want, especially at your lows. Uh, yeah, definitely not, uh, not looking too strong right here, but we did say it was going to sweat it out. Uh, volatility is still expanding, uh, expanding upon the lows. Uh, I'm still not a fan of all that. And if again, it did want to come back down to uh, about four, $4,000, it definitely could very easily, uh, especially from right here in this posturing. We have uh, DMI minus and the ADX. Uh, they're both above the threshold. ADX is strengthening to the upside. DMI minus uh, is looking a little, uh, it's kind of waning a little bit, but it could still take off from here. And so uh, it's pretty much saying that the momentum is definitely to the uh, bears. Uh, bears have it right now. Uh, looking like we are retracing yesterday's candle. Uh, do we get continuation from here? I do think we kind of move out a little bit more sideways along these lows. Um, <clears throat> Stokes are testing the uh, the oversold area. Uh, we still have a little bit more time till we come down from there. But as you can see, uh, we usually for like the last couple lows of this range have came around this area and have turned back up. And that is what I would like to see. Uh, from this if we're actually going to go ahead and test the top side of the range so pretty much like Today or tomorrow these stokes need to turn up. Well, it doesn't need to but uh, it would be nice to see the stokes turn up if we're going to go ahead and get that uh, Momentum shift to the upside and test the uh, Top of the range All right, and then let's go ahead and go down to a four hour on this one the lower term time frame to see what's going on We are building up a few divergences uh, bullish divergences mind you and so those are really strong we have two drives of that three is usually the magic number to get like that really nice strong move back all the way to the top side of the range is what I would be looking for from here since we are on the low side uh, two should bring us at least to about fifty one thousand dollars if we go ahead and uh, if price action does decide to go ahead and confirm a low right here um, Stokes, uh, turned down as of the, uh, geez, I keep doing that, but Stokes are turning down, calling this the top pretty much right here with that hidden, with that drive, a hidden, uh, bearish divergence. Like I said, usually those are a little bit more weak and you would test pretty much like the, uh, first area of support, which we did. And you know, that move has already played out, uh, played out. And so... I do think we're with these uh, the drives of uh, bullish divergence. We're going to go ahead and come back to about fifty one thousand dollars in the short term and move sideways along these lows. Uh, I'm still getting that uh, DMI and ADX. Uh, yeah, this is just pretty much trending up here above the threshold and um, momentum even on the lower term time frames is to the downside is what I'm getting. Let's go ahead and look at four hour Stokes. We do have a trend line on this that we can go ahead and uh, we can go ahead and use. Let's see. We'll go ahead and draw it like this for this one. Let's see. This one's a pretty tight one, and yeah. Mm, I'm not really a fan, you know. 
It was kind of obvious at first, but now that I'm drawing this, I'm not really too much of a fan of this trend line. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and play off of it. If we do come back up and test around here, I'd be looking, you know, if we break up, that's a good sign that we're going to go ahead and get, get if we break, if we turn up and break above this trend line, it's a good sign that we're going to get continuation back up to maybe about $51,000 or even to $53,000, right? Those are my first two uh, kind of pivots in this market, right? Uh, 51,000 this high, 53,000 is kind of the medium term pivot. And when I say like medium term, I guess kind of like on the daily, right? If we go ahead and go back to the daily, if we go ahead and put a high right here and momentum oscillators are going to go ahead and turn back down from this region uh, at $53,000, I would be pretty concerned because uh, it would be looking more like uh, we're going to go ahead and bust through those lows, especially if momentum oscillators get a little bit room to breathe and turn down. Uh, but if again, if we start to close like four hour candles above this, uh, $53,000, I would expect more continuation to the top side of the range. So about $60,000. $60, again, this is all pretty concerning. Uh, we've tested this area for like what? One, two, this is like the third time. Uh, yeah, usually, you know, like I've been telling you guys third time's the charm and, uh, you usually don't hold up for that, uh, past that third time. But uh, we'll see. It's still a little too early to tell. Let's go ahead and get back to the four hour and see if we can go ahead and get anything else out of here. Uh, no, very clearly a downtrend. I don't like how we were not able to really, you know, turn up these moving averages. This is uh, this is looking pretty nasty on the, on the short term time frames. Uh, again, as long as we're living above here, about 45,000, we'll be all right. But as soon as we take out that low on a four hour basis, on a four hour closure, I would be targeting moves back down to at least, at least 40, 42, 43,000. And then if that area doesn't hold about 40,000. So we kind of got our levels to be looking at right there. So let me go ahead and put a, no, I'm not gonna put a horizontal on there. Y'all could just go ahead and uh, do that on your own. Anyways, let's go ahead and Let's see. Let's go ahead and move on to NASDAQ. Uh, just because traditional markets kind of kind of move along with Bitcoin. And so I want to go ahead and look at that since they're about to open up tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So on the daily, NAS is looking really good. We went ahead and uh, confirmed a low right here. Uh, nothing on like super crazy volume. So again, this pivot probably isn't that strong. And it's just probably like a short term low. So I'd be kind of cautious in this region. Uh, we are going to be testing our first area of resistance pretty much now with the advent of this closure, which is 13.5. Uh, if we start to close daily candles above there, I would be targeted moves probably back up to at least 13.7 uh, and then 14. Yeah, 14,000. Um, Let's see, we are still making higher lows in this structure, so that's definitely very good for the bull's case on this. Um, volatility is expanding, so it's definitely expect some crazy price action. Looks like we are getting, yeah, we did get a bullish cross, or bullish cross? Stokes are crossing to the upside as of uh, the closure a few days ago at the end of the week. And so that's really good to get more continuation back up to the top side of the range at least. Uh, Again, we want to see how it comes, how it goes when it comes to the uh, neutral line, which is about 50, and see if it turns down from there. Uh, that would be an area where I would be cautious uh, in that, and I think that would probably come around with this area, about 13.7 anyways. Uh, we are testing the EMA on the RSI. As you can see, this has uh, worked pretty well with these prior highs right here. I do think uh, we will break this, uh, just because we are pretty much like we confirmed this low. And we already are at the EMA, but yeah, DMI ADX pretty much saying consolidation. So I'll probably just fill out this range between, let's see, we'll put a horizontal here, between here and at least the top side of the range. I'll go ahead and remove this for right now just because it's starting to look a little convoluted, but I do think we fill out this area a bit more. Yeah, I'm not going to get into lower term time frames on NASDAQ or SPY, but it's looking pretty healthy and it kind of makes the uh, case that we might see a little bit more upside on Bitcoin uh, coming into next week. And so that does make me feel pretty confident. If we look at SPY, 
Yeah, Spy's looking really good right here. Uh, let's see. I would like to see the Stokes turn up. Uh, we are coming in at the 50 mark. No, just... Yeah, so it's pretty much at the 50 mark right now. Uh, we'll have to see how tomorrow's, can how tomorrow's closure goes. But it's looking pretty good with this uh, reversal. How's volume on this? Not too bad. Uh, it's nothing too crazy again. Kind of like NASDAQ. Not a, not a huge pivot in the market. Um, I would, my first target would be about $4,200. Yeah, $4,200 pretty much. Test the top side of the range. We don't have any divergences or anything. If we do break this low right here, let's say we do come back down, I would expect uh, a move down to about uh, $3,900, $3,950, we'll say it. Yeah, so pretty much along these prior highs right here. So yeah, looking at CMEs, or did I look at CMEs? I think there was something I did want to know on CMEs. Yeah, so on the CMEs, if you look at the daily stokes, no, I don't know what I was looking at. Was it a four hour that I was looking at that on? No, okay, never mind. I don't know what I was going to bring up on here because that is definitely not what I'm looking for. Never mind, ignore that. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and move into some Dogecoin analysis. Why not? Let's see. So we are consolidating in between the, uh, let's see, spot 618 and spot 382. Uh, again, I'd still be cautious in this region to go ahead and put in a lower high. Uh, we have had a decent bounce so far. Let's see. DMI ADX, pretty much same consolidation. Uh, we do have these Stokes turning up right here, though. Um, well, not even confirmed up. So we would like to see them fully cross before then. Uh, still have a lot of time left in today. You know, daily candle just started. I'd still be looking for a high, probably somewhere between the spot 618 and the 786. If we go ahead and get a high, or if we go ahead and start closing dailies above here, I would target a move back up to the all time high. But again, this is this did this did just dump 50%. Typically, you dump 50%, right? You get a nice bounce from that level, and you kind of put in a bull trap from there. These are big ranges that you're playing with in Dogecoin. So again, you just want to be on uh, on the lookout. Um, I do think the uh, a little bit of news has helped with this, just because you know it may get listed to a more uh, a more legit exchange, right? Because we all heard about the uh, Coinbase listing with Dogecoin, and that's probably some pretty good news for uh, for Doge. And I I think it may help it pump up a little bit. If anything, that may be a good catalyst for that lower high I'm looking for, or kind of on the lookout for, but. Yeah, I guess that's really all I have to say about that. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to DOT. So I'm re I really like DOT just because, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking about you know putting some trades out there for it. Uh, we did have a nasty pullback. We tested the one spot 272 and came back down to the spot 786. Let's see. So ADX is about to, well, it's crossing over the threshold. DMI plus, I'd like to see that strengthen up with it. Stokes are looking really good here. Uh, we are, came down to the neutral zone and crossed back up. That's really good. Um, and we had this, had this drive of hidden bullish divergence. I still think this is playing out. Yeah, nothing really bearish upon this. Uh, let's say we come back down. Let me see. I did say we'd probably have a pullback down to about, you know, $41 even, which we did get. So nice. Um, if this area does not hold, though, I would target moves back down to uh, $34. I would not like that if it came back down there. And I'd start to be really concerned and probably hold my breath uh, in that area. Because if we go ahead and take out this low, it's going to be uh, it's going to be pretty bad. You know, I drive my next target would be $28 if we were to take out that low. I don't really think that's happening with how this is consolidating at its highs. Um, let's see, so what are my targets to the upside for this one? One spot, 414, easy target. Uh, 
and then I would like it to I would like to see it get to the two spot. Uh, that's when I would start to look for more uh, sideways consolidation from this rally, but it's looking really healthy right here. Uh, no problems really, in my opinion, as of yet. And that kind of uh, concludes everything in this video. If you guys have any questions or anything, uh, want me to look at anything, go ahead, leave a comment down below.